Hi everyone, uh, I know that it's probably about two months late to be doing a video on this, but oh well, this is what I felt like doing, so here it is. Um, I'm a big Batman fan, and I noticed that, you know, <clears throat> The Dark Knight Rises has had kind of a, a mixed reception. Some people really love it, and some people really don't like it. Um, but my personal thoughts, um, I do like it. I think it's pretty good. I do think that it has some glaring errors, though, and that, uh, some problems, I mean. And that people who, some people who don't like it kind of do have a point. Um, now there's going to be, spoiler warning, there's going to be some spoilers. I'm not going to give away the big twist of the movie, but some spoilers in, in what I'm, while I'm talking. Um... Okay, so so yeah, I, I overall I like the movie. Um, one thing that I did like this movie is it feels a lot bigger than the previous two movies. Um, like the bad guy scheme involves making a detonating a nuclear explosion um, in Gotham City and basically wiping the city off the map. Um, the stakes feel very high and it feels very big, which I, I think is fitting for the end of the trilogy. Um, I like all the new characters pretty much. Um, Bane is a pretty good fun villain and, and his group. Some people are complaining, again this is spoiler territory, that um, part of what Bane is doing and what his what the villains of this, this series are doing is trying to um, complete the work of Ra's al Ghul and, you know, finish off Gotham, what he was trying to do in Batman Begins. Um, and some people were saying that that doesn't make any sense anymore since... Um, Gotham has been cleaned up largely since the events of the Dark Knight due to what happened in the Dark Knight. Um, my take on it though was that the villains in this movie aren't as mentally stable as Ra's al Ghul. They're, they're a little crazy and a little obsessed and they kind of want to destroy Gotham not just because it's you know corrupt quote unquote but, but just as part of this sort of nihilistic message about humanity that they have. That was just my personal interpretation, and so I, I didn't really have a problem with them wanting to destroy Gotham. Um, I liked Catwoman. I thought that um, her depiction was very good, you know, Anne Hathaway. They really got the character down, I think, in that, you know, she's not a hero, but and she's very, you know, opportunistic and everything, but she's also someone who you could see, you know, working with Batman towards a common goal and uh, doing heroic things occasionally. Um, I liked Officer Blake. Um, you know, a lot of people felt like the Dark Knight series could not do um, Robin in this realistic setting, and I thought they found a good way to do it. Um, I do have a minor pet peeve about what they did with his name towards the end. You know, I think they could have done that better, but that's just like a minor one. Um, I do agree with a lot of people that him just knowing Bruce Wayne was Batman by looking into his eyes was dumb. They should have had... There were so many other ways they could have done that better and had him, you know, find evidence or something, you know, trace it back and figure out that Bruce Wayne was Batman. I mean, I'm sure it could be done. It wouldn't have been that hard to do. Um, you know, the supporting characters returning from other movies kind of have smaller parts in this. You know, um, Commissioner Gordon, um, Alfred, but they still do a great job. I really love those actors in those roles and, um, you know, their, their roles kind of smaller in this, though. But those are really good. Oddly enough, I think the weakest part of this movie is Batman and Batman's story arc, which is kind of interesting because obviously he's the whole reason for the movie existing. Um, in my opinion, yeah, the Batman story arc is kind of weak in this. You know, at the beginning he's gone into seclusion and he's injured. Um, he's crippled for some reason. And at the end of The Dark Knight, he wasn't crippled. So there's, there's no practical reason for this and it's not really explained. I like to think that he, it was from his injury from the Joker blogs. Um, by the way, that's a YouTube original series that's really good. If you liked The Dark Knight, you'll like the series a lot, and I recommend you check it out. Uh, shameless plug there. Um, but but if you didn't like The Dark Knight and thought it was too intense, then don't, because it's, it's very much the same tone, and it can be pretty intense sometimes, the Joker blogs can. But for an original YouTube series, it's really good. Um, anyway, back to the subject at hand. Um, yeah, he's injured, and he's gone into seclusion because Gotham doesn't really need him anymore. Um, and he's, kind of, he's still depressed about racial and is, um, obsessing over that. 
And I didn't really like them doing that with his character. It made him look, I don't know, more psychologically disturbed, not as, not as strong as I always envisioned Batman. To me, the ultimate Batman will always be the animated series Batman. Um, but I don't know. He was just, just too angsty for me in this. I mean, it, some angst is good with Batman, but I don't feel it was handled well here. And, yeah, him going into seclusion just didn't feel earned after the last movie. I could see him going into hiding, I guess, because he's wanted by the police, but, you know, him becoming this, this completely secluded, shut-in weirdo, it, it just didn't, didn't sit well with me. Um, and then, of course, they have him make this comeback, but then he has to make it twice because he gets beat up by Bane. They should have just kept the second one, and, you know, the first one was, I don't know, it was, just feels repetitious to me. I'm not sure which one would have been the better way to way to do that. Um, and, you know, they had this whole thing during the second part of the movie where he gets put out of commission, put in this pit jail. And a lot of people complain about this, too. It's, you know, left unguarded because supposedly part of the torture is to have hope and not be able to reach it. Of course he gets out, you know, you know he's going to. And he also has his recovers from Bane's, you know, breaking him remarkably easy. Um, the whole problem, the Batman story arc just doesn't feel earned. And I find myself not caring about him as much in this. It's kind of hard to explain, but I just, you know, I only care in that he's going to be there to save the day. And I cared a little towards the end where you, you think he's going to die. That's a bit of a spoiler. I won't go into it. Um, I don't know. I just thought that, you know, the whole, the whole hero struggle where he's got to overcome these obstacles, it didn't feel all that personal it, it um, just felt kind of kind of like a vague and cliched um, and it didn't really really strike home um, that said I thought the rest of the movie you know was pretty dang good um, and I'm I like all the um, Christopher Nolan Batman movies um, you know I don't I don't think that they're all uh, perfect not even the Dark Knight um, which a lot of people you know love and I think is really good um, but, you know, I, I like them all, and I like this one, too. I'd put this one on about par with Batman Begins. Um, but I would say Batman Begins is a bit more consistent in terms of quality, whereas this one, it has some parts that are, like, really good and are quite a bit better than Batman Begins, and some parts that I feel like are quite a bit worse. Um, and like I said, mostly I just think that the Batman story arc is, is kind of weak and feels like it's running out of gas. Um... That's my thoughts on it, and like I said, I know it's it's kind of late, kind of kind of after the fact to be um, doing this, but me being a big Batman fan, I just wanted to put in my two cents. Um, take care, and see, talk to you next time. Why are you saying that into the camera? I've got a friend that's going to put this up on YouTube. I don't think that's going to happen. We'll see.